Uh, our project is about the rotary engine, and our my teammates are uh, Lawrence, Paul, Rithik, and Danny. All right. So the rotary engine was invented um, by a German named uh, Felix Wankel in 1957. He had this dream when he was 17 years old, and it, it took uh, 40 years for that th dream to come true. Like a piston engine, the rotor engine uses the pressure created when a combination of air and fuel is burned. Uh, in a piston engine, that pressure is contained in the cylinders and forces pistons to move back and forth. The connecting rods and crankshaft convert the reciprocating motion of the pistons into a rotational motion uh, that can be used to power a car. In a rotary engine, the pressure of combustion is contained in a chamber formed by a part of the housing and sealed in one face of the triangle rotor, which is what the engine uses instead of pistons. The intake phase of the cycle starts off at the tip of the rotor and passes the intake port. At the moment when the intake port is exposed to the chamber, the volume of that chamber is closed to a minimum. As the rotor moves past the intake port, the volume of the chamber expands, drawing air-fuel mixture into the chamber. When the peak of the rotor passes the intake port, the chamber is sealed off and compression begins. Compression. As the rotor continues its motion around the housing, the volume of the chamber gets smaller and the air-fuel mixture gets compressed. By the time the face of the rotor has made it around the spark plug, the volume of the chamber is again close to its minimum. This is when combustion starts. All right, most rotary engines have two spark plugs. The combustion chamber is long so that the flame would spread too slowly if there were only one plug. When the spark, when the spark plug ignites, the air-fuel mixture pressure quickly builds, forcing the rotor to move. The pressure of the combustion forces the rotor to move in the direction that makes the chamber grow in volume. The combustion gases continue to expand, moving the rotor and creating power until the peak of the rotor passes the exhaust port. Once the peak of the rotor passes the exhaust port, the high pressure combustion gases are free to flow out the exhaust. As the rotor continues to move, the chamber starts to contract, forcing the remaining exhaust out of the port. By the time the volume of the chamber is nearing its minimum, the peak of the rotor passes the intake port and the whole cycle starts again. All right, now the description of our, um, of our parts that we created. Unlike a regular combust, like a four-cylinder engine, internal combustion engine. The rotary engine doesn't have that many parts. Here, you can see uh, the eccentric shaft and the rotor. The rotor basically, which is the green thing, basically replaces the piston. Each face, which you can see on each um, edge of the triangle, basically acts as the piston top. And from there, you know, intake, compression, exhaust happens. The eccentric shaft, as you can see, is the red part. Um, contains two lobes on the end, which are offset is where the rotor sits. And the reason why it's offset is because the way the way the, the rotor actually moves in a housing isn't in a perfect circle. Um, in this case, there's two offset lobes, meaning there's uh, two rotors. So there's six faces acting um, as like a six cylinder engine. The next two parts are the end housing and the center housing. The eccentric shaft goes through the yellow part, which is the uh, center housing and the white part is the end housing in which um, the, uh, the eccentric shaft ends upon and the, low, the uh, rotary p uh, engine part, the triangular part, rotates around the end housing and the center housing in between the two, kind of like a sandwich. Okay, um, here we have the, the oil pan and a uh, rotor housing. The rotor housing is where the, the first green part that you saw uh, rotates in. And you see the two holes for the spark plugs and two um, other holes there. And the, the oil pan, you see um, that's basically where the, all the oil rests on as the engine runs. All right, there's the other rotor housing and the drill bolt, which keeps it together. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the, um, the exploded view of our, of our engine. Like I said before, it's... Um, really quite simple compared to um, a regular piston engine. Here, the blue parts you can see is the, um, the rotor housings. And the back part of the picture, that's the intake and exhaust ports. 
the closer parts, the two holes, are the spark plugs. And that's everything. Because of the design of this engine, it's used in uh, various different types of uh, mo vehicles. One is the um, an airplane, a rotary engine airplane. This one is called the uh, Diamond. Diamond D20. The other car, the black car you see here, is the RX-8, and the teal car is the RX-3. Both are made by Mazda. Mazda is big on rotary engines. All right, here we have some more cars, more rotary uh, engine cars. We have two RX uh, sevens, nice, uh, nicely souped up, and we have the the uh, the engine itself here. This is what they put on the RX eight, which is supposed to be uh, easy on emissions, uh, much more efficient than the old engine. Um, some of the advantages and disadvantages of our rotary engine are that it is smaller in size, so there's more room for other components of the car if you were to need that room, and it also decreases the weight. It also, for the same amount of displacement you have in a regular piston engine, you get more power out of that. Uh, and another wonderful thing is that it has less moving parts. One of the disadvantages of having a rotary engine is that the seals on each of the edges of the rotor, um, they tend to have a problem wearing away, so at around 65,000 miles you'd have to replace it depending on how you drive it. And the other problem is fuel economy. They say that the fuel economy for the same, if you were to put the car in the same weight class as another car, the piston engine would have better fuel economy. But a lot of the um, rotary engine cars have equivalent fuel economy because they're lighter. Okay. And Thank you very much. It. Thanks. Any questions? I go first, then if somebody else. Uh, okay, first um, uh, question in general. I saw you have a lot of information, so I'm assuming that you took them from uh, some sources, internet, am I guessing? Yes. Okay. Uh, what, what sites were those? Um, basically, howstuffworks.com is where we got most of our things, and a few other sites uh, was Wikipedia. All right, okay. So uh, just, a, just, just a pointer in general, whenever you prepare PowerPoint presentation in the end, give, or put also a slide with the reference of where you're taking information like uh, of this kind, figures, uh, put them, uh, always give credit, okay?